This is going to be a very simple exercise that I am going to show you. And as you can see, all I did, all I'm doing is having uh, three um, pieces of paper in front of me of the same size. It's, um, I don't want you to look at the measurements of it because there's no perfect measurement. I'm simply trying to illustrate a small example by using three um, elements. When we use to design things, uh, what happens is um, we we must have some kind of a balance of using elements when we are especially doing a presentation. So in this case, I have three, one, two, and three. Now I could remove two of it and I could use just one and that would be perfectly fine. That means that is my focal point. That means whatever I'm doing, that is the focus. I could also do two and that would be my focus, which is a balance of two. That means my whole focus is totally one piece, but I am showing you two things. So I could show you two pictures or I could show you two letters. I could show you one picture, one letter. So I'm having basically two things. Now the other thing I can do is I can actually bring in a third element. So now this becomes the center and this becomes the sides, but all of it can be one picture this could be one picture and then these two can be words over here or the, all of them can actually be one picture broken up into three parts. Now let's take a look at just one element. So let me remove these two elements and put it on a side and let's just talk about this one element on its own. Let me get that out of the way. Okay, now when you look at this element and let's say the black is basically the display and then that is basically your element. It could be a picture, it could be some words, it could be your logo, whatever you want. That is basically your element. Now you could put that element dead center. You could put that element, you could put that element on the side. You could put element on this side. You could put it on the center and then you can even tilt it like that. Okay, so that's another way of, of playing with that element. Just as we have one element, that means we could put the element this way, that is straight up and down, just like that. We could also tilt it. We could tilt it halfway, which is known as askew. My senior design students know this. It is known as askew. Askew means, see, this is perfect alignment. This is perfect diagonal alignment. That means now the point is up and down. But if you do it halfway like that, like it's between this side and this side, it is known as askew. Askew means you're turning it slightly. Those of you who know fashion models, when they model and they pose in front of a, computer, uh, of a camera, you will see that they are actually askewing their body. That means they're, they're tilting their body lightly just for that style. This is known as an SQ. Now let's continue a little bit. Uh, I do want you guys to know that I'm recording this at my home studio and there is a lot of noise on the street. Whenever I press the record button, that's when the noise comes. When I'm not pressing the record button, the noise is not there. It's always my bad luck. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at these three elements. When I say element, it basically means something that you're putting in the design. So a picture could be an element, uh, your logo could be an element, a symbol could be an element. Let's say you write some words like T-H-E, that could be three elements putting together to make one big element. Uh, in this case, as you can see, there is an equal line and an equal line over there. We will talk about those lines in one second, but I want you to know what is the meaning of an element. That means when you are designing something, it's how many elements do you put on the design? How many elements do you put on the design? Now, when we have three elements that look like this, there is a very interesting, see, now this lesson is actually very, very, interesting and uh, it took me more than two days trying to record it because I really wanted no noise from the street and as you can hear there is noise from the street because when I'm recording the whole world wants to destroy my recording <laughs> so anyway now when you look at these three elements there is something very special about it and this is one of the coolest things about graphic design yes I know all of us are 
fashion designers, we are not graphic designers, but the rules are kind of the same. The rules of design or the principles of design are kind of the same. We just use two different types of industry. Graphic design is more about artistic two-dimensional design, basically like magazines and posters and uh, invitation cards and all that stuff. Whereas fashion design is more about clothes that is three-dimensional. That means the clothes is all around and you can see the pers person wearing the clothes all around. So that is, the, you know, that's, that's the, two, the, the little difference. However, this is the same principle. Now, when I'm doing something like this, what I could do is I can move this slightly away. Now, what happened is you immediately could see that this is one and this is two. Before, it was like this. So that was basically number three. There is no one, two, three, there is no numbers. But when you look at it, you immediately at the back of your mind say, ah, that's three elements. But if I do this, guess what? That is not three elements. This is one element and this is two elements. So this is one element and this is two elements. Now. Of course, I could do this, and I'm sure you, were, you already thought of it. You were like, wait a minute, I'm sure he's going to do that. Now, if I did that, guess what? There is two kinds of translation to this. One is, that's one element, that's another element, and that's another element. But then some of you might say, no, 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 wait a minute, that is just number three. All together, it's number three. Right? But see, I didn't do anything very special. All I did was simply move them with equal distance between the two. Object or element, space. Object or element, space. And object, and there's nothing on this side. There's nothing on this side. So when you look at it, you're looking at either the number three, one, two, three, or you're looking at one, one, and another one. Now let's pick up speed a little bit. I could also bring this together like that and bring it together like that, no space. Now what I'm doing is I am basically making one object. Even though you see two lines, I am making one object. Now some people might say that this is boring, it's better if you do it this way and I agree. This seems a little bit more interesting no problem. It's totally up to you on how you want to do something based on the elements that you are using. Now remember, one thing about design rules is not just about what you are having in front of you. It's also what the content is. The content means how does the picture look? How is the words designed? That is the meaning of the content. The value of the content lends itself to the overall design. So you must understand. It's something like, let's say if I was having a dinner party and let's say I'm expecting five people to come. I might buy two chickens and I might think two chickens is gonna be good for five people. But if 10 people are going to come, guess what? I cannot use two chickens anymore. I need to get two more chickens. You see, the elements have changed because the audience number has changed. So the same thing that when you are doing designing something like this, Based on what you have, you design. Now let's talk about something that's a little bit related to our work, but it is um, a little bit something where I think most of us don't really uh, think about as much, uh, we don't pay attention to, is the planning of the work. Now this is, this is very important. Before I do a project, what I want to do is my plan. I want to make sure I have all the elements. In this case, it's three. I want to make sure I have all my elements in front of me as best as possible. As best as possible, I want to make sure I have all three elements in front of me. Because when they're in front of me, what I do is something like this. Now, I know this is a lesson, but you won't believe how many big graphic designers, illustrators out there in the world do something like this because they're trying to think out ideas, something different that they want to do. 
So they may lay out something like this, which seems very standard. They may do something like that, but they may move this all the way up there. Let's bring this down. They might do something like that. That could be one way of them looking at something. They may be trying it. You might say, eh, that doesn't really look nice. But you see, you're thinking, well, that, 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 um, that may be not the idea I'm going to use. But you don't know what is that element, what is that element, what is that element. All you're seeing is three yellow squares. But I could use a photograph here. I could use another photograph there. Or I could use one photograph but it's spread between these two. So these two are black, but the photograph is actually one piece. And then the words are over here. Or this could be an extension of the same photograph. Isn't that cool? I mean, so it depends on the content. That means what's in the element. I could also do something like this, which seems like a nice balance. Sorry, it's a little bit skewed. So you see, that's a perfect balance right there. So that could be one picture, another picture, another picture, or that could be one picture, some words, some words, or maybe that's the same logo, one logo, one logo, one logo, or maybe it's the whole thing is one logo but broken up into three parts. That's also possible, right? When we are basically doing uh, graphic design or we're doing uh, layout design, this is a, a very good exercise and um, of laying out a pattern a pattern basically means some kind of a repeat. This is considered as a pattern because it's the same thing, but there's three of them. So it's considered as a pattern. And, um, and then you could position it this way, which is basically a basic uh, layout. Then you could actually position it where one goes over there and then one goes over here as a straight layout. That means it's going this way as one layout, this way as one layout. Then you can start playing around where you can actually start having layouts go this way, which is one off center. That means these two are in a straight line, but this guy is just going a little bit that way. Then you could start going like this, which is a very modern style type of layout. Let me just reposition that. Something like that. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's, it is more investigative. That means you may go into a design already knowing exactly what you want, and that's perfectly fine. But sometimes you need to just enjoy the process of playing a little bit and seeing what works. Sometimes this might work. Sometimes something like that might work because you might have another element over here, another element over there. Um, for me, when I'm actually designing, I try to keep less elements, meaning I try to see that I don't do too much. I try my best to, to not do too much. I, 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 this is, this, uh, doing too much and doing too less is a lesson in its own, right? Because sometimes we need to know when to stop a design. We can't just like, you know, when you're making a garment and let's say you want to put uh, three diamonds, I think three diamonds in the button style might look really nice, but don't go and put 300 diamonds because that could be a little bit too much. It's like putting sugar in your coffee. You know, you put one spoon is okay. You put two spoon, three spoon is okay. But if you go and start putting 10, 20 spoons of sugar in your coffee, I really don't think you're going to enjoy that cup of coffee. So knowing when to stop is one of those skills that you just develop as you do more trial and error business. Meaning you do something, it doesn't work fine. You do something, it doesn't work fine. You do something, then ah, now it's working very well. Then you do something and then uh, uh, no, it's not working again very well. So you kind of like do a trial and error and then you start realizing that certain things that when you do, it's fantastic. And then certain things that when you, you do, you know the result is going to be absolutely nonsense. It's just not going to work. Things will be off balance and, and people are not going to like it as much. So you don't want to do it. So it's, it, that comes with experience. Graphic designers, usually when they work, they tend to do something like this. Maybe they're not doing it my style, but I learned this from some designers that I worked with, but they didn't exactly do it in square. They use patterns, mini patterns. My 
senior fashion design students probably already know this lesson from my design class where I basically play around with patterns. I make the pattern really small and I play around with the pattern to come up with some other design. Uh, that is if you really love pattern making. If you just love straight up design then obviously this might not be the way for you to go. But you know, give it a try, see, investigate. You are still trying to find out who you are as a designer. So I think you should uh, just, you know, experiment a, a little bit. Try to see where you go, where your design skills take you. And then you kind of add and mi minus design skills a little bit. So that way you kind of fine tune your role as a designer. Because just because you're a designer doesn't mean you should go and start designing everything. You should design what really meets your brand, meets the vision of you. So it's just one of those things where I like working this way because I like to plan things out. I want to put it on a black paper with yellow and I want to play around with different, different shapes and I want to see, okay, that looks pretty nice. But you know what? If I did that, maybe that could be interesting. Again, I don't know. I don't know till I see the full uh, content of the element. I don't know, but this is an interesting placement that I might think it might work. I could do something like this. You guys knew this was coming, right? Something like that. That might work. I mean, I've seen that somewhere. This is not original. I've seen it somewhere, but I could do something like that. It seems a little off balance. Maybe, maybe that seems okay. Maybe it should be this way, going this way. Uh, now there's another um, element that I want to talk about is you actually putting one thing on top of another. So don't feel that you, can, you have to only be on the side. You can also go on top of one, one another. Something in the front, something in the back. So, you know, this is all about playing around to find out how you want to lay out a certain design based on your presentation. Okay? Boom. Thank you.